you might say I play the uh, cosmos uh, chaos or the cosmos ignorance because uh, as far as people on this planet are concerned, they, they know uh, far more or less than they do uh, what they know. I mean, that they, uh, it's so much that they don't know until what they do know is not even important. So it comes down to that point where they don't really know anything. Um, proof of it is the state of the world today. Uh, nobody knows what to do. In the first place, this planet is sitting out in the midst of space. It's just sitting out here. It's a liability. Um, it's practically bankrupt as far as when it comes to if you had to take inventory to see what it has produced. Uh, it hadn't really produced anything for the betterment of all the people on the planet, all nations and and uh, male, female too. Uh, it hadn't ensured too. It hasn't done that. Still got the same old story about misery and uh, bewilderment. It's the same thing as it ever was. Nothing has changed here. So my music is about uh, changing things. I never was satisfied with the planet. From a child, I always was complaining about the planet, even though my people would tell me I didn't have anything to worry about. Why was I complaining? I just complained because although I was doing all right, I saw some more people who weren't, and I saw some little children who were crippled, grown people too. I saw people in all kind of terrible conditions. I never did understand that. And I never did feel that it was necessary or that it had to be. I never could get that out of my mind. And uh, I had this feeling that there's something better for humanity. It's just a matter they just haven't reached for it yet. Uh, this music is an attempt to get them to reach for the unknown, not knowing uh, what they're going to get. But whatever it would be, it wouldn't be as bad as what they already have. Because what they have always ends up into something that's bad. And you have to judge a tree by the fruit. And when you look at the world today, then of course the seeds that have been planted have brought forth something that's not too good for people. It's not suitable. So then having this sort of spirit or this sort of mind, well, uh, I'm, I've always been terribly dissatisfied with the planet. Not with governments or anything like that. Men need government, but the uh, governments, it's not the governments that's to blame, but uh, the men there are just men. They don't know too much. They might go to school and learn things, but then the schools are limited because uh, a lot of things that educators haven't touched upon, they're just getting around the psychic things now. There are a lot of things that are of great value to people that haven't been touched upon. Now, the music is what can do it because the music is a, it's a universal language. It's also a pure language. Because whereas men can speak words, make mistakes, uh, they can tell some lies, and they so well put together and sound so pleasant, you might think that it's the truth. But then when a musician, uh, when a musician who's really schooled or who's really a natural musician, whenever he plays something, uh, he doesn't have to be too well schooled. It's one thing that people in the world know, they know when a musician makes a mistake. He can make a mistake in a melody they never heard before, and they know it. And he can make a mistake in the rhythms, and they know it. Uh, he can make a mistake in the harmonies. They know it. They know one thing. They know when a musician make a mistake. Now, politicians can make mistakes, and preachers can make mistakes. Teachers can make mistakes, too. And students don't even know it, but it's once somebody can't make a mistake. That's a musician. Scientists can make mistakes, too, and go for years, and everybody thinks the truth. But a musician is caught right on the spot. He made a mistake. I know one day, here, right in Philadelphia, I was composing a song called Pleiades. I had four flutes playing.
one flute player, then he had, he was playing it, but he wasn't really playing it to suit me. Before I could say anything, a man uh, walked in the house off the street, a black man. He walked up behind the flute player, and he was pointing to him, and he was saying he didn't have it. Now, he didn't, uh, he had never heard the song before. The notes were being played, but he pointed to the one that didn't have it. So then that's what I'm saying, that uh, people just know. They know things about music. They can feel things about music. If uh, I've had cases happen to me where, uh, like in New York, a drummer wanted to play with me, and I was saying, well, no, you're not ready yet. He said, well, I've been playing five years with you. Why am I not ready? I said, well, I don't know, but you're playing, but you're not playing what it's going to take. We were going to Harlem. I said, I, I don't think you should go out there and play. But anyway, he went. We had two, I had two drummers. There's a black woman sitting in the front seat. All at once she said, this is the, one, the best band I ever heard. It's something wrong, though. She finally pointed at the drummer and said, it's him. He doesn't belong up there. Now, I've had that to happen to me in several cases where the public, they said, no, they don't belong up there, and they pick out the one who doesn't. If he, and so it doesn't come down to how, ma how many uh, notes a musician can play or how much schooling he has or how much he knows. It's not like that, this band. It's just they have to fit. They have to belong up there. And I tell some musicians that. They don't understand. They know they're good musicians, but they don't understand what I mean until they get on the bandstand, sitting outside, off the bandstand, it's different from sitting on the bandstand. Quite often it gets very hot on the bandstand. It gets so hot, if a musician don't really have himself together, he have to get off. I had an experience like that in New York City where a bass player was playing with me. All at once he got off the stage and packed up his fiddle and walked on out. I'd see him, two years I'd be seeing him, I didn't say nothing to him, he didn't say anything to me. I didn't say anything when he walked out the door for the bass. But one day in Harlem, I saw him, maybe about, about two and a half years later. Then he talked to me. He said, well, where you at? I said, I'm here talking to you. I'm standing here talking. He said, I don't mean that. I mean, I played with a lot of band leaders. I never played with a band where something happened to me when I was on the stage. He said, you remember when I walked off the stage? I said, how can I forget it? He said that the reason he walked off because his heels got hot. His heels got so hot that he said it looked like they were going to burn up. He had to get off the stage. He said, I don't understand that. Why did that happen? Well, like I said, uh, something else be going up, up on that stage for a musician. And even if somebody from the audience get up there, <laughs> they'll find out that there's something happening. Like, this music has been tested out in all kind of ways. For instance, like in Chicago, once I was placed in a position where I had to play the organ by myself opposite a, a blues and rock and roll trio. They had the organ, they had the drum, and uh, saxophone, all I had with me. The owner of the place told me, he said, well, you're playing an organ like it should be played, so play it for me, no paying attention to the public. Well, I was playing my space stuff then, in this blues place. So one night a man came up, he was standing on the stage and I was playing. So he said, folks, he ain't BSing, he playing space. Then uh, I kept on playing and uh, he ended the piece.